printed out some notes this week. Yeah, I think you might be leading the conversation. So. Well, if I'm leading the conversation, shall I lead the intro? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. Hello and welcome to the Mailbox Rogues Gallery, MBRG, as I'm now calling it in my head. Um, my name's Sean. My name's Birch. And welcome to episode 15. Yes. We have, oh, we've chosen a right old rogue oh, this week. Oh, is he? Yeah, I'm t- well, I shall tell you. I, I'm the one with the notes this week. Yeah. It's only Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Little Albie Einstein. Before you did any research into Albert Einstein, what did you know about him? I knew that he was a human being. That's, I... Okay, that's very vague information you've got there. Well, you know, you've got to start from kind of like the vaguest possible uh, areas. and then From work... the littlest acorns, the mightiest oaks grow. Exactly, just like my mind. And uh, I very much did that with my research for, for Albert Einstein. Okay, so you knew he was human. Anything else? Um, no, not really. No, not really. Okay. No. <laughs> um, well, I think most people know him as being probably the most famous scientist, physicist. Mm. Came up with the theory of relativity, general relativity. And he was just a guy, wasn't he? And he did that funny photo where, where he stuck his tongue out. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah that, that was good. Nice. That was good. Didn't he say that he equaled MC Hammer? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was the other thing he was famous for. I mean... He predicted MC Hammer in about 1916. I mean, that's about 65 years before MC Hammer came along, at least. So prophetic. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was truly truly one of the great minds of his time. And, and you know, not just for that, not just for predicting MC Hammer. Mm. Well, the other famous fact about him, of which I have no other information, is that he married his first cousin, Elsa, after he divorced his first wife. Right. That's well, also weird, isn't it? Is a bit odd. No, you say that's the only information you have. Perhaps we can speculate on this a little fill bit. Fill some more. gaps. Where, yeah. Where knowledge actually should be, we'll just fill it with some conjecture. Yeah. That's what we call ethical journalism. Yeah. Well, it's worked for us so far. Yeah. Wait. I mean, don't don't imply that anything we've said previous to this hasn't been completely factual. Oh no, but I mean, I, I find that uh, our instincts tend to have been correct, like looking back at past episodes. Well, yeah, what what tends to happen is we say something in an episode, it gets recorded, we put it out, and yeah, then uh, just, we Google it afterwards, and oh my god, that was true. Yes, yeah, oh, this might be li- libelous, what we said about this. Oh no, no, it turns out we were 100% right. The Queen is a lizard, That's, yes. Yeah. So, would you marry your cousin? I've got a lot of cousins, which one do you mean? <laughs> um, Kurt. Kurt. Um... No, probably not. I like the way he eats scrambled eggs. For one thing, is just like really off-putting. As detestable to you, is it the way he eats scrambled eggs? It's horrible. I couldn't live with that. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't expect anyone to. Okay, what about um, little Susie Lou? Little Susie Lou. Well, I you're mean, you're smiling. I think you're you're a bit more keen on this idea. <laughs> Is it because she's female? Just out of interest. Well, I mean that. Yeah, I mean that. That's certainly a plus over what Kurt had. Yeah. Going for him. Yeah. What I would say the issue with with Susie Lou is the uh, the arson that uh, she's always arson about, isn't she's she? She's always arson about just the amount of things that she sets fire to. Wood. Wood. Okay. Yeah, all the time with the wood, buildings, people. Right, that I can see that is quite off-putting. You'd be in, maybe in a bit of danger yourself. Well, yeah, this is people are one of the arson targets that might... Uh... And you're a people. I'm a people, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of your cousins, because I, if I recall, you've got about 48. Um, mm. Just one more. Uh, what about Fat Dan? Do you think you could ever love him? You know what? I reckon I could. He's a good laugh, Fat Dan. He's a reliable guy. You can have a drink with him. Cuddly. Yeah, exactly. I was about to yeah. say that. Yeah, you can cuddle this, up to him. In this the... Skinny Dan's an option as well. Um, he's thrown his hat into the ring. I have spoken to all of your cousins to check which ones are available. So far, uh, about 12 mm. are. Yeah. So, some are still on the fence. Obviously, you just blown through the first two, not interested. But you've got the option of Fat and Skinny Dan's. And Steely Dan's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Steely Dan, we don't really talk about him so much. He kind of like swanned off and started like this music career. I mean, yeah, what happened to him? I don't know. I don't know what happened. No, no one's heard from him since. No one mm. knows if it kicked off or anything. But no. whatever he's up to, all, all the best. But yeah, of of the three Dans, I'd say uh, Fat Dan definitely uh, be the preferred option there. Okay, right. Well, uh, I, I feel like I've done quite a good job as matchmaker here. Oh right. Oh, I thought it was hypothetical. What this is actually gonna? <laughs> I I took that as a verbal contract because he's already agreed, and now you've agreed. 
Right. Um, and I, I am an ordained minister. That wasn't a ceremony, was it? That well, it was most of a ceremony. I've married most of a ceremony. What's, <laughs> well, whatever's left, I'm stopping there. <laughs> well, you're mostly married. Um, I just have to crack this egg over your head. And then it's done. Keep that, keep that fucking thing. I, could, I see you lifting your arm up. Keep that thing away from me. I mean, I'd say for a crack it on your head, I could probably just throw it from here and get you. <laughs> what kind of ceremony is this? <laughs> well, it's I'm... a very, very, very orthodox Greek ceremony. I'll have you know. I would. Uh, oh yeah, of course, fat of... Dan. <laughs> of course, fat Greek Dan. Fat... <laughs> they call him that for a reason. And obviously, I'm also Greek, hence being ordained. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll um. Well, I'll thank you not to disrespect our culture. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Not, I, I had no idea I was being set up here for a, for a, a wedding. Well, you say set up. I mean, you, you were pretty keen on Fat Dad when I first mentioned him. It's because you only gave me 48 options, my cousins. <laughs> right, do you know what? I don't think this is going to work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep an eye on you this entire episode. If I see that egg be lifted off the table, so help me God. All right, look, I'll keep it here. I'll just keep it. I'll just roll it around in my hand. It'll be fine. You're grasping it. You're grasping the egg. <laughs> don't grasp it so much. Well, I don't want to grasp it too hard. I don't want to break it. I don't want to smash it in my hand, and I'll end up married to Fat Dan and you for your horrible triumvirate of Fat Greeks and you. What's wrong with Fat Dan? There's nothing wrong with Fat Dan. I just don't want to be married to him. He's married. To, he, he loves you. I, I don't want to get in the way of that. No. Gosh, no, no wonder the divorce rate's up nowadays. Yeah, especially in the Greek Orthodox community, certainly. Yeah. Jesus. Well, unlike you, Albert Einstein was quite keen to marry his first cousin. So he did. Elsa. Uh, like I said, nothing more to say on that. I mean, if that if that's the most uninteresting thing that happened to him, then I'm quite keen to hear the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah, if, I've got, I've got. Because usually bit, so. that's usually that would be quite a a big thing to say about. Someone. He hated wearing socks. That's the other thing about him. Ooh. Yeah. What he just wore shoes, no socks. Um. Or he didn't even bother with shoes. Shoes if he had to wear something on his feet. Barefoot, wherever possible. He had big hobbit feet, though, didn't he? Well, I don't know. Was he a hobbit? Were hobbits German? Could have been a German hobbit. Yeah. Oh, I God. mean, I the pictures I've seen of his feet are fucking massive and hairy as well. Isn't that weird? When you type anybody's name into Google, it comes up as a suggested search, their name and then feet. That's weird, isn't it? It is weird. Like, the, the Google algorithm is a bit all... Iggledy piggledy. I don't know that people are necessarily searching that. When are they go are on that it. many people into feet that you know, like a w round the world, it suggests that to people. Not well, everyone's got a pair. Well, not actually, no, not everyone. No, most people though. Those who don't though probably want to know what they look like. Yeah, they're, they're probably the ones googling people's name and then feet. Yeah, they're probably just kind of sat there envious, googling feet, looking Aww. at all these pictures. That's a lovely pair, isn't it? Oh. I'd love to have them on the end of my nubs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're all thinking that and saying that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we took a break from recording the podcast to eat a Kinder Egg each, and what you're listening to is the sound of Birch being stumped as to how the toy in his works. I wish that was a joke, but... Um... <laughs> It's not, is it? I'm, you really str I can see you struggling. I don't get it. <laughs> All right, up, up, hand it here. No, I'll no, get it. Okay, I'll right. get it. I got a minion with a drill. I got a girl just a looking smug. What? God, I to believe this. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is a stupid <laughs> toy. Oh no, I got it. Hey, hey, get on. What is it then? Well, it's, it's still stupid. You. I figured that out just by watching you do it. Load of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I've got that on tape. <sighs> so, back to Einstein. Oh, um, I added Einstein on Facebook. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Except did you? Um, it wasn't one of those ones where I sent a friend request. I just liked him. But I, I'm sure he'll share some interesting posts, whatever he's thinking about, whatever he's up to. Um, it got, he must be getting on. Actually, he must be really old. I guess he would be, yeah. Well, I know he went to primary school in 1901. He's got to be pretty old. Oh, no, actually, no, he's dead. I remember he's dead. Oh. Because one of the things I found out about after he died, his brain was stolen. His brain was his stolen? His brain was stolen, yeah. So the pathologist who autopsied him um, just took his brain without telling anybody. Just took it home. Maybe in his briefcase. I don't know. Um, and then he refused to turn it in uh, for 40 years. 
Yeah. What was he doing with his brain for 40 years? Was he trying to, like, make himself smarter, perhaps? Like, put it, like, shove it bit by bit up his nose. Right, yeah. In the hopes that it would kind of stick and graft to Do his own brain. Do you think the nose is the best way to the brain? I'd go in through the ear. I'd put it in through the ear canal. I don't like people messing with my ears, so I'd probably go for the nose. You like people messing with your nose. Yeah, enough. that's yeah. good. Yeah, those those two are the most direct routes, so it's one or the other. Yeah. You know, I just like the idea he was getting up to adventures even when he was dead. Even when he's just a brain, it's just like maybe this guy, this pathologist, and him were friends. He's just like hanging out on the sofa, passes a beer to the brain next to him, just like pours it over the brain. There's a there's a good sitcom there. Yeah, I feel like it. And here's here's the other thing, right? His eyes have also been on an adventure. <laughs> um, someone else has got his eyes. They're in a safety deposit box in New York. <laughs> what, what are they doing there? <laughs> No idea. Probably not much to look at in a safety deposit box. No, pretty dark, I'd imagine. Yeah. I just think it's 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 beautiful. He's still having adventures even after he died. Well you say adventures. He's in a safety deposit box. Who who And his brain his brain's as much fun as he's having, all he can see is the inside of a safety deposit box. Mm. So hang on, what who who stole the eyes? Who put the eyes in a safety deposit <sighs> box? I can't remember if they were stolen or just given. <laughs> Here I you go. Like... Have Einstein's eyes. Yeah, just like. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, honey, <laughs> I don't, I don't, what am I going to do with these? I'll put them in a box. You, honey, I've got a surprise for you. <laughs> or oh, I can just imagine them like in a shop window, and it's got a little card underneath it, and it says "For the man who has everything." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a little necklace with a pair of eyes on them. Yeah. Uh, just hanging off their stems. Yeah. No, I don't know. I was quite happy with the knowledge that his eyes were in a safety deposit box. I didn't feel I needed to do any more digging into that story. Mm. Between the eyes and the brain, I, I felt like I was quite satisfied with, with that level of knowledge. Yeah. Well, they're safe there, I guess, as the name would imply. In a safety deposit box, yeah, very safe. Mm. Much more secure than just being in a coffin in the ground. Anybody can dig you up. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Another thing I heard is uh, his testicles are in Scunthorpe. Well, you know, in a way, his testicles were always in Scunfort, if you get my meaning. I do get your meaning, yeah. But now they're hanging over, like, the the top of a bar. Yeah, like I this... think it's the rugby club bar, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's good luck to squeeze them when they're watching a game and just give a little squeeze. Yeah, or give them a kiss, just as you're about to go. <laughs> yeah. The night before a big match, they just give them a little smooch. Yeah, that's that's right, yeah. And there's quite a few people there, and there's, like, they're all queuing up to kiss his nuts. And it... it... It's bad form to pop one in your mouth, but I think people do every now and then. Yeah, ju well, just out of curiosity. You would, wouldn't you, if you were there? You yeah, would. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to. Yeah. Be rude not to in a lot of ways. I wonder if through some ghostly means all of this uh, ball kissing is getting back to that brain. I wonder if it's just like he's aware of this somehow, that his balls are being kissed. Well, he's probably in a constant state of happiness, or at least whenever Scunthorpe play. Yeah, it's probably a mixture between boredom from the safety deposit box and yeah. ecstasy. He doesn't know where he's coming come and going, does he? He's like blind, hanging out in an apartment with a, a thieving doctor, having his balls kissed. Some life. Yeah. I mean, I'd trade my life for that in a heartbeat. That's a good point. I wonder what happened to his heart. Oh, his, uh, his heart found its way to uh, Aberdeenshire. It's funny, isn't it? Funny place for his heart to end up. He uh, deep fried it. Tasty. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it is, yeah. So, um, his married life was a bit weird. This hey. is where, this is why, this is why I'm pitching to get him in this bloody rogue's mailbox, right? Mm. We were getting to the subject of his familial relationships, where he talked about marrying his cousin. He also had an, an illegitimate daughter. He had a, a son called Edward, mm. uh, who was sent to a German mental asylum for schizophrenia when albert einstein emigrated to america never saw his son again just left him in a mental institution in germany jesus yeah to be looked after by his mum what a knob yeah i know to say the least <laughs> suffice to say his son was not fond of him so with his first wife before mm. he divorced her they were on the rocks for a bit yeah and basically they decided to stay together for the kids yeah so what he did is he wrote out a list of conditions that she must adhere to for them to stay together. For him to still be with her, she has to adhere to this list of conditions. Well, I'll, ju I'll just interject for a moment. I, I think that's very fair. It sounds like he's doing it, as you say, for the kids. Mm. So maybe by, by laying down these um, 
these perfectly fair ground rules it will make life happier for, for all of them i presume so so please continue with with the list yeah uh, i'm pleased to hear that you're on board of him so far um i'll just read you the, read you the contract it was essentially that he made a okay idea to yeah official so point a you will make sure that my clothes and laundry are kept in good order that i will receive my free meals regularly in my room that my bedroom and study are kept neat and especially that my desk is left for my use only this is a bit overbearing but it's not. Well, you, well, you know, he he was a a genius, an eccentric, if if you. And will. it was a different era. No, of you know, course. The role of women in the home was very different back then. Exactly. So it might not sound wonderful, but you can maybe understand it, given the context. Yes. Okay. Well, point B. Mm -hmm. You will renounce all personal relations with me, insofar as they are not completely necessary for social reasons. Specifically, you will forego my sitting at home with you and my going out or travelling with you. That one's a bit harsher. Um, well, what you could say he was trying to say there, maybe he was trying to to spare both of them. So, like, if, instead of her dragging him round a clothes shop, and she's trying on, we've all been there, oh, and she's trying on all these outfits, and and he's sat in in Debenhams with the bags, just looking at his watch, going fucking hell. When is this, Angry Birds? When he's, is, he's completed Angry Birds? He's been waiting there so long. Yeah, exactly. Now. That's not good for anyone. That's not good for him. He's just waiting there when he could be coming up with some uh, scientific theories, no doubt. Some science, yeah. And it's no good to her because she's there to enjoy herself and uh, find something nice to purchase. And she can't enjoy herself when he's sat there miserable, can she? Exactly. So, so no, yeah, um, maybe we could say that's fair as well. For the good of both of them, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, point C. You will obey the following points in your relations with me. You will not expect any intimacy from me, nor will you reproach me in any way. You will stop talking to me if I request it. You will leave my bedroom or study immediately without protest if I request it. Um, now, I mean, they're staying together for the kids and there's living in matrimonial hell. Um, I think you got a bit of both. Well, you have to understand, Sean, it was a different time back then. <laughs> You will stop talking to me if I request it. I mean, we all want life to be like that. We all want everybody to have a tacit agreement with us. They'll just stop talking as soon as we want. But we can't ask them. We can't ask the nearest and dearest in our lives to just stop talking. Are there any other conditions? Well, the last one. You will undertake not to belittle me in front of our children, either through words or behaviour. So obviously a bit of bitching going on. Yeah. Did she have any rules? She just wanted him to comb his hair. And looking at the pictures, do you think he did it? Well, in fairness, it suited him. It might have suited him, but it made her quite unhappy. Mm. Um, I was actually thinking about drawing up a similar contract for our relationship. Okay. I'm I'm not going to copy Einstein's. I've come up with it myself. I will say I'm going to be drawing over that one about I'm not going to give you any intimacy um, and you can't reproach me for that. Because I know at the moment you're quite disdainful when I won't be intimate with you. Um. Yeah. We're doing this on air, are we? Well, uh, it's as good a time as any, isn't it? This is the only way that me and you spend any time together. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, no, that's uh, that's fine. Give me your conditions. So, yeah, um, the point number one, mainly about the intimacy, mm. none of that. Point number two, every time you come over to record, you should bring me a Kinder Egg. Okay. Yeah, mainly because I want to see you struggle with the toy again. That was quite amusing when we did that before. Yeah. And um, you couldn't work out what you were doing. They don't come cheap, Kinder Eggs. I think they're about 69p. Okay. I'd get one for yourself if you want. I don't mind. That's not that's not going into the contract. Don't worry. You can get one or you don't have to get one. What else can I make you do? <laughs> now, you see, you're, high, you're, you're wondering what you could... You said you wrote out a contract, a legally binding contract, and now you're just thinking of ways to, to fuck me over, basically, it sounds like. Yeah, it was one and the same. Why, not, but why, why can't it be both? Well, one's written down and the other's not. Well, I'm going to write what's not written down down, and then it'll be written down. Okay. I want you to stop listening to Wham completely. No, I draw the line at that, Sean. What? How is that impacting our friendship? It's it's destroying it. It's gone too far. I mean, it's just like every time I look at you, I, your eyes are glazing over and you're just thinking of Andrew Ridgely and his beautiful tones. You're not even a fan of George Michael. You're just like Andrew. Yeah, usurper. He, he Andrew was the real talent there. He was the reason everyone bought the albums, wasn't he? Well, you might say so, but... You're wrong. The Wham Rap, Sean. That was the uh, first 
rap song in the UK. It charted, It was the first rap song to basically do well in the UK charts. It's called the Wham Rap. The Wham Rap. See, I hate you knowing all this Wham trivia. I just find it distasteful. You've got to do something with your spare time. Oh, I suppose so, but I just wish there was something a bit more constructive. Well, it's constructive. It uh, keeps me off the streets. Keeps you... me off the heroin. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh God, you were a right terror when you're on the smack. No, I know. Yeah, I was. I was an absolute horror to be around before I discovered Wham. More so than you are now that you have discovered Wham. So surely this this contract should be null and void. <sighs> Do you really want me to go back to beating up old ladies and stealing their vials yes, of heroin? If it will stop you talking about Wham, yes. Look, it's in the contract. I think what we should do is we should hash this out with our lawyers sometime. You haven't said what your conditions are going to be yet. Well, I guess I'll have to make some, won't I? Yeah. Uh, seeing as you're uh, being so dogmatic. Yeah, fine. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I hate the way that you wear your left shoe on your right foot. In... Wait, hang on. Is it, are we doing ten things I hate about you now? <laughs> well, there's, there'll be a rule coming afterwards. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I hate the way you wear your right shoe on your left foot and your left shoe on your right foot. That's the way I was born. My feet are on backwards. That's not my fault. Yeah, but you need to integrate into normal society, Sean. No one wants to see that. You're, you're scaring people. Look, just because I spend all my time Googling celebrities followed by the word feet to see what normal feet look like doesn't mean I'm a monster. I've seen kids cry when we've gone out for meals. Cry looking at your feet. Yeah, they are weird. Weird and backwards. You didn't, I'm not saying you have to get them locked off and then put on the right leg. I'm just saying maybe... Well, hang on. Would you do that for me? If you're up for it, I'll cut your feet off. <laughs> I'm very up for it. I mean... See? We're, see? Now, mine, mine are more constructive, my points, aren't they? I, I, I'm, I'm warming. I'm warming again to this relationship. Yeah, because I know that when you were... You were a bit of a streetwise professor, weren't you, when you were a heroin addict? And I think you probably did a lot of surgery in backstreet alleyways. That's the only way I could fund my habit. Yeah, so, yeah, chop my feet off. But you put them back on the right way around. They'll go on the correct way, yeah, unless you want to kind of maybe experiment a bit. Uh, oh, backwards? Yeah, so what, like the heel of your foot is joining with your leg? Yeah, I want the heel of my foot. If you scan upwards, you'd go from heel to the front of my knee. What we could heel, do... shin, knee. What we could do is we could put the heel to connect to your leg, strengthen the, the bones and the cartilage in your toes, right? Yeah. And have you be like a constant twinkle toes flintstone whenever you'd kind of throw the bowling ball. Oh yeah, well, that could work definitely. Make you a bit taller, give you a kind of a quite a an elegant kind of walk. I could be a ballet dancer. Finally, you could finally I could live fin your dream. Finally, pirouette like I've always wanted to. Okay, I can see this working. Yep, I'm ready to hear your next point. So far, so good. Um, and and this is something that affects me. Mm. I I need you to stop going to to pie eating competitions and berating the contestants, especially when I'm partaking in the pie-eating contest. So when you're a contestant in a pie-eating contest, yeah. I can't say anything to you? You can't berate me. It's it's off-putting. You know that it's been my dream to win one of these things for years, but when I'm tucking into these pies against these these, these real sportsmen of, of the pie-eating oh, world... Oh, yeah. Athletes, I would say. When, when I'm tucking in... <laughs> <laughs> when I'm tucking in, the last thing I and the other sportsmen want to hear is, yeah, have another one, fatty. Uh, do you like that pie, do you, you fat fuck? Look, I don't want to come to those events. You and your cousin Fat Dan drag me along. If I'm going to be there, oh, this, is, look, this is just like Albert and his uh, wife when they go shopping. You know, if, you're going to, if I'm going to be there, I've got to make my own fun, haven't I? I'm not saying you can't have fun, but it's just cruel, you know... A lot of these pie eaters, they can't help how they look and how they're perceived by you. Like, why should they have to impress you? Part, I think part of the problem is, is for every pie that I see the contestants eat, I down a beer. And considering there's generally a row of about five people eating pies, yeah. I, I tend to have about five glasses up to my mouth at once, and I probably have finished all of them by the time anyone's finished a pie. So I do get horrendously drunk. Okay, well, compromise. How about you have three pints a go rather than the five, and rather than berating myself and everyone, perhaps uh, just pick on one of the stragglers, like the runt who can't even finish the crust. 
You want me to say it, do you? What? You're the runt. What? You're the straggler. Me? No, I... <laughs> I... <sighs> I've been eating pies for years. I know, but you can't eat them quick enough, can you? Yeah, but Fat Dan said that I was... <laughs> Fat Dan's an idiot, all right? <laughs> I'm not saying you can't put them away, James. I'm just saying you're not quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> I've been training my whole life for this, Sean. And it shows. I'm not saying you're not good. I'm just saying you can't manage more than about three or four pork pies in any given minute. Then I'll get better. I'll keep trying. All right. Well, good. See, this is this is I'm 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 encouraging you. Right. <sighs> here's here's my idea for a compromise. Right. You only drag me along to every other pie eating contest. So maybe we just do it twice a week instead of four. Okay. And every other time I would drink a beer. I just have a pint of milk. Maybe, so but... it's milk, beer, milk, beer, milk, beer. Yeah, but I... That part's fine, but I, I need you there every time. I, I need moral support when I go. I can't rely on fat fucking Dan stuffing his face with a fucking steak and ale. Well, yeah. He it, can't support me. Well, no, he's got his own... He's part of the competition as well. We'll leave that one on the table. You okay. always can uh, untangle that. That's fine. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, well... I appreciate you bringing it to the fore, though. We needed to talk about that. Yeah, it, yeah, it was kind of lingering for a while. I guess it needed to be brought up. You still got some gravy on your lips, by the way. I know. I'm, I'm training. Okay. Any other conditions? One thing I would say, which I think more than anything would be good for you, more so than anyone else. Go on. I think you need to look in the mirror. Is is, is all I'm saying, and like take a pair of scissors. You need to cut your hair, basically. Look, you've been training all your life to be a pie-eating contestant. I've been training all my life to have the longest hair in the world. So far, it only reaches down as far as your knees. I want it to reach all the way down to your feet. Yeah, well, that's the problem. It reaches down to my knees. Forget yours. It's past yours. I know. It goes past mine. It goes in a little loop on the f floor. It goes up round your back. I usually tend to hang it over your shoulder, and then it comes back down to your knees. That's the way I like it. I want it all the way down to your feet. I want to trip you up with my hair. It, it just, it, Again, because that time I did it once, it was hilarious, remember? Well, I... I you slipped into the swimming pool, you cracked your head on the side of the concrete, it was hilarious. Yeah, I, I don't remember much of it, I remember you telling me it was funny. And it was, I mean, I'm laughing about it now, it was great fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it probably was, but... it. What was so funny about it was, if you'd fallen a foot to your left, you would have landed on a nice, lovely, soft, floating lilo in the water, and, it, you know, you would have had a lovely little laugh. But the funniest thing was, is the visual of watching you almost do that, but instead, cracking your head on the concrete. Yeah, I... See, even still, I can't quite see how that's funny uh, for you me. Had to, you had to be there. I mean, you were there, but you had to be... Conscious, not... yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just... It reflects badly on me when we're going out places and people see me... And they think I'm walking around with it from the Adams family. Yeah, well, I'm going for a Chewbacca look, but it's difficult. You know, I don't have, I don't have the time to curl it all. No, that would be time consuming. I can, I can appreciate. Well, how about, how about this? Okay, so the time in which you're not trained to be a pie eating contestant, you help me curl my hair, and then when I'm not curling my hair, I can shove pies down your throat. Okay, that's yeah, a good compromise, isn't it? That, yeah, no, yeah, that's. That is quite a good compromise, yeah, I'll agree. Okay, all right, I'm happy with that. I'm sure it worked this well for Einstein as well. Yeah, I mean, they did end up getting divorced, oh, and then right. he married his cousin. Oh. So if we're going with that trajectory, you and Fat Dan, you're going to be married. Maybe I just have to accept it at this point. Oh, wouldn't that be beautiful? You could enter pie-eating contests as a couple. Imagine it in the local paper. Fat man and fat wife. <laughs> Yeah, go on. <laughs> Finish the fucking sentence. Fat man, fat wife, go on. Win pie eating contest. Yeah. Hand in hand. And then it's got a photo of you taking the last bite of the last pie, but you it's like Lady and the Tramp. You've got it between your mouths and you're holding <laughs> it up by your mouth and you each take the last bite and as you do, you kiss. I imagine it as like me and Fat Dan, topless, and it's like the scene from Ghost where they're still doing the pottery, except we're moulding some pies, yeah. some dough. Yeah, I could see that, yeah. Making some pastry. Yeah, another another lovely story for the local paper. Lovely haunting image for everyone there. Yeah, I can see the headline for that one. Fat couple, open pottery workshop. Beautiful, another, another lovely image there for the local paper. Mm. To be honest, once you're rid of me, the world is yours to conquer. Yeah, no, I've been thinking that for years. Yeah, okay. We'll give it one more go with this contract and we'll see how it goes. So, in essence, Birch, what 
Einstein succeeded with his theory of relativity is explaining the Newtonian mystery of where gravity comes from. See, gravity results from massive objects bending space-time geometry. Ah, uh, I get it now. It makes sense now, yeah. Okay. That's great. Okay, well, I think we've pretty much covered what we need to talk about with Albert Einstein. Yeah, this was really enlightening. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I can see there's, looks like some of that might have been t missed off the tape. We won't worry about that. Oh, no, no, I'm sure, they, I'll, I'm sure I'm there's sh some fact in there. I think they've probably got the essence of the theory of relativity. From I'm what? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so that's all we've got to say about Albert Einstein. Mm. I would like to say that you can catch us on Facebook, Mailbox Rogues Gallery. You can also catch us on Twitter, at Mailbox Rogues. Uh, email us at mailboxrogesgallery at gmail.com. Is that right? That is correct. That's correct, yeah. I'm getting good at this. You're getting good, yeah. Okay. And um, what was the other thing? Oh, rate us, review us, iTunes, really helps. You can listen to us on YouTube, Podbean, and iTunes. I. Uh, uh, tunes. I. <laughs> tunes. And uh, if you are uh, listening to us through iTunes and you're enjoying the podcast, please be sure to give us a rating and, most importantly, a review, because it all helps get the podcast more exposure. Yeah, we're going to be superstars. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Okay, if you just want to lead us out with one final quote from Albert Einstein, off you go. Very well. In the words of Albert Einstein, I'm blue. Dabba dee, dabba die. A dabba dee, dabba die. Dabba dee, dabba die. Beautiful. I know, he's a real poet as well as a scientific thinker. Yeah, I mean, that was in German, was it? Yeah, uh, ich bin blue. Daben, dieben, daben, dieben. Yeah, it's, it sounds even more poetic when you say it in German. Hmm. Just dwell on that, Sean, for a moment. I'm going to take that with me. Yeah. Yeah. I really will too. Okay. Well, I've been Sean. I've been Birch. Good night. Toodles. <laughs>